Imagine if you had to survive 100 days on one single lucky block. And by breaking the block, you can either get extremely lucky or the worst luck ever. Will I be able to complete all 10 lucky block phases and obtain every powerful lucky item? What epic builds will I be able to create? And will I become strong enough to take out the lucky block dragon? Well, it's time to find out. Day one, it was just me and this one single lucky block. There was nothing else I could do apart from break the lucky block, so that's exactly what I did. When I broke the lucky block, I was given a piece of cake which was really random, but even more importantly, the lucky block told me that the challenge had begun, and I was in the first tier, which was the normal tier. It also told me that I had broke one out of ten lucky blocks in this phase. Knowing that there was going to be even more crazy phases, I continued breaking the lucky block. I got a bucket, so I decided to place it down if I was to fall off, but when I broke the lucky Lucky block again, a slime structure had spawned on the lucky block, and well, let's just say the water source was no longer with us. Anyway, at least I had some blocks now. After making my way back over to the lucky block, I decided to continue breaking, and I was presented with a full set of wood tools. It wasn't the best, but it would definitely help. I then somehow got wooden tools again, a lapis block, and also pumpkins, which was perfect because I could now replace the slime blocks and use these pumpkins instead. With the pumpkin platform in place, I obtained a mini version of myself, which supplied me with leather armor and a stone pickaxe. I now only had one more lucky block left in this phase, and upon breaking this final block, I was now on the dirt tier? Anyway, because I had entered a new phase, the lucky block rewarded me with a lucky sword and a lucky bow, which means I won't need my old swords anymore. I also had some lucky potions, but one of them had minus 100 luck, so I threw those ones away and used the luck plus 100 potions instead. I managed to get cookies and tons of enchanted books. I kept the good books I could use later, like a fish and got rid of the ones that simply weren't very good. I then began digging through the dirt phase, and well, this one was just dirt. I don't know what else I was expecting. Eventually, I made it to tier 3, the copper phase. But before I began exploring this phase, I finally placed down a chest and stored all of my goodies. Now, it was time to see what type of things I was going to get from the copper lucky blocks. I mean, it seemed pretty normal until it gave me a lucky chicken. I now had to decide whether to keep this chicken to start a food farm or take it out to see if it would drop any overpowered lucky items. I went with the second option and took the chicken out. I couldn't believe it. The chicken dropped nothing special. It seems like the one lucky block had tricked me. After feeling silly, I expanded my platform with some wool and broke the lucky block to discover that this phase had 50 lucky blocks I need to break to get into the next phase. I then got myself some wood from the block and made a crafting table, and even got my first set of iron tools, which I was super happy with. Using my new tools, I continued mining the one lucky block. The copper phase was definitely my favorite so far because I got a mending book. Something strange then happened which I was not expecting. A bunch of horses had been summoned to my platform by the lucky block. There was just too many horses, so I had to move some off my island. But I did keep one. Afterwards, I placed down a barrel and cleaned up my inventory so that I could keep mining the one block. I obtained items like netherite boots and much more. It was now coming to the end of day one, so with this in mind, I made a bed, placed it down, and got some sleep. To begin day two, things got scary. The block decided to summon evil strays to my island. I used my lucky sword to deal some quick damage, but the strays were just too strong. My heart were low. I could not let everything end here, so I placed blocks to keep myself safe while I waited for the stray to be gone. Once the army of strays were gone, I ate some food to regenerate my health. I was glad the battle had ended, but if this is how crazy the block is now, just imagine what things are going to be like later. I then placed an anvil and got back to mining the lucky block, which gave me glass to expand my island, some chickens to start a farm, and tons of more awesome loot, like these diamonds, and this super powerful sharpness for mending sword. I definitely won't be needing a new sword for a while. Anyway, I stored my goodies in a chest, and went back to mining. I wanted to get to the next phase. And, just as I was almost at the end of the copper phase, this tower of pigs with a villager on top spawned on my island, which was weird, but kind of funny. After taking out the pigs for food, I let the villager live on my island. I will make him his own home later. It was now time to enter the next phase. So after breaking the final lucky blocks, I was now in tier 4, the amethyst tier. I couldn't wait to see what was going to be in these lucky blocks, but before I could even begin mining the amethyst lucky block, I looked up and saw that I was awarded 4 lucky blocks for getting this far. Maybe the lucky block can be nice. Anyway, I got some blocks and began towering up to investigate what was inside these weird looking lucky blocks. It seems they had the essentials, such as oak logs, lava and 
water buckets, dirt, and oak saplings, which fell into the void. I really hope the lucky block will give me saplings again at some point. I got down from my tower and wasted no time. I used my wood as fast as I could to construct even more storage and some fences so I could keep my chickens safe. After getting the chickens into their brand new home, I continued breaking the lucky one block. The amethyst phase was so much better than the copper phase. I was getting things like emeralds and gold and so much more. I was even able to get some glass to expand my island even more. I decided to construct a small area for my villager. I needed to make sure he was safe so that I could use him for trades later. Once his house or whatever this thing was was complete, I went back to mining the lucky block to get even more goodies. But then something terrible happened. Lightning had struck onto my island. Everything that I had worked for up until this point was disappearing in front of my eyes. I grabbed a water bucket as fast as I could to save everything. Luckily for me, I was just about able to save everything, apart from my villager. The lightning had turned it into a witch. I couldn't quite believe my eyes. After repairing my island, I decided to reorganize my chests and place down all of my stone to turn it into cobblestone so that I could make a furnace. I constructed the furnace and placed it down. I began cooking my food and went back to mining the lucky block. It seems like everything that the amethyst lucky block was dropping was just getting better and better. That was until my island was invaded by endermen. And the only way that I could get rid of them was if I was to construct a shield. Once this was done, I went one by one taking out all of the endermen. It was time for battle. Once I took them out one by one, they were all gone. Thanks to my shield, getting rid of the Enderman was actually quite easy. I then noticed my inventory was getting a little bit more full, so I made another chest and dumped all of my goodies inside. I then got something absolutely incredible from the lucky block. A bunch of golden apples and an enchanted golden apple. I don't know quite why it looked like this, but anyway, these golden apples were going to come in super handy for any future battles. As I was continuing to mine, I got my very own trident, which was super powerful. I will definitely need to use this thing against the lucky block dragon later. I continued mining, and I was getting things such as shulker boxes, redstone ore, and even some saplings, which I couldn't quite believe. The reason getting these saplings was absolutely amazing is because I would be able to grow the saplings to get wood so that I could ultimately expand my island and make some huge builds. After planting down all of the saplings, I decided to get rid of the witch. Keeping this witch on my island was simply going to be too scary, so this had to be done. Once I was done dealing with the witch, I got some sleep. And on the next morning, I decided to complete the amethyst phase and move on to the next tier, which was tier 5, and this was the summer phase. This lucky block seemed extremely exciting, and I couldn't wait to see what was inside. But I realized that I didn't want to go through this phase with my small island, so I decided it was time to construct an extension. And for this extension, I would need tons of stone. So for this reason, I made a cobblestone generator, which was pretty efficient if I do say so myself. I would also need a bunch of wood for this extension, so for the next few few days I farmed up a bunch of cobblestone from my cobblestone generator and chopped down a bunch of trees to get wood and I even expanded my tree farm area as much as I could. Once all of this was done all of my iron tools were pretty low on durability so I got my diamonds out and upgraded all of my tools to diamond tools. This would make things such as resource gathering a whole lot easier. I then also spent some time organizing all of my building resources and once this was done it was time to begin construction. I started by redesigning the middle area which would be surrounding the one block. I made a circle area and moved over all of my chickens. I then surrounded everything with a small wall and began extending a bridge downwards. I would then be connecting together three islands. One to keep all of my chickens, the second platform would be where I keep my tree farm, and well, the third largest platform would be a huge storage area. So after placing down all of my saplings in the tree farm, I began construction on this huge storage area. I would need this thing to be quite big because the lucky block is going to be dropping a ton of random items, and I would definitely need a place to store every single one of them. Midway through building this storage area, I had a visitor on my island. It was a wandering trader, and it was actually trading one oak sapling for five emeralds. This was great news, because with this oak sapling, I could use different types of wood to make my island look even better. So after grabbing some emeralds, I bought the oak sapling and decided to go and place it in my tree farm. Once that was done, I finished up my storage area. I also completed the interior by placing down all of the chests. Once the build was done, it was looking pretty good if I do say so myself. All I had to do now was finish transferring transferring all of my items from the main storage area that I had before into this brand new storage build. I finished transferring everything so I decided to take all of my best overpowered equipment out of the chests so that I could start becoming more powerful to get ready for the next phase. And I mean if I want to stand any chance against the lucky block dragon, upgrading my gear is going to be extremely necessary. Now to add in chance and upgrade everything I would need some XP, so for this reason I placed down a bunch of lapis ore and redstone ore that I had and mined through it all to get some XP. I ended up getting 7 
17 levels in total. But before I continued doing everything, I realized that my old wandering trader had disappeared and a new one had arrived on my island. Anyway, it was coming up to night time, so I decided to sleep. And on the next morning, it was time to begin upgrading every piece of armor and all of my tools. I made an easy access chest to temporarily store some items, and I even constructed a smithing table. After taking out a zombie, I made a diamond chest plate and a diamond helmet. And after putting it on, I opened up the anvil and placed my pickaxe inside. I upgraded my pickaxe by putting an efficiency 4 book on it and also a mending one. I then had a sharpness 4 book for my sword, so I decided to upgrade my sword to sharpness 5. This sword is going to be extremely powerful. I then got some gold and combined it with some netherite scraps and used the netherite ingots to upgrade my pickaxe and also my sword. I even discovered that I can add luck to my lucky items by combining them with diamonds. And the more diamonds I add to my lucky tools, the more secret powerful abilities they unlock. I only upgraded the sword twice, but I will definitely get this thing to maximum luck before day 100. Now that I had upgraded tools, it was time to cook up some food and begin on the next phase. This lucky block seemed extremely exciting, so I hesitated no longer and began mining. Now, seeing as this is a summer lucky block, I was getting some pretty interesting things like these water bombs. I really did not want to test these things on my island, so I threw them off my island instead. But after realizing that this did absolutely nothing, I had to throw them on my tree farm. And after doing this, I discovered that these water bombs are actually pretty awesome because, well, it's literally a water balloon. Anyway, the next day, I decided to go up to the crafting table and upgrade my lucky bow. I didn't have too many diamonds, so I only upgraded it once and returned to mining the lucky block. And, well, this happened. I think I've now realized why these are called the summer lucky blocks. Because my island was filled with water. After clearing all of the water up and fixing my island, I continued mining the lucky block. This lucky block phase was just as unpredictable as the rest. I had no idea what to expect. I mean, I even got a visitor on my island. And it was an evil guardian. It seems that the summer lucky block phase was beginning to summon monsters of the ocean. Luckily for me, I was easily able to take out the guardian. My sword was simply just too powerful. With the guardian off my island, I mined the summer lucky block again and got a weird looking item I had never seen before. It fell off my island, so I decided to grab it and take a look. This item was called a water gun, and I saw that I could add luck to this thing, so before even testing this thing out, I added some luck to this item. The water gun did exactly what I thought it was going to do. It was actually a really good way that I'd be able to obtain infinite water. The water gun was definitely one of my favorite items that I'd got so far. I mean, just take a look at me. I was having so much fun. So much fun, in fact, that I decided to risk everything by seeing if I could MLG water gun clutch. After having a bunch of fun with the water gun, it seems like the water did not want to stop. I could tell the summer lucky block definitely enjoyed spawning water on my island. But I mean, that's not the only thing this lucky block was spawning in. I then got a visit from this giant zombie. This thing was terrifying. I mean, just look at the size of this thing. But I quickly realized that it wasn't trying to attack me. Maybe it was friendly. So for this reason, I decided to let this thing live on my island. I spent some time moving this giant zombie out the way of the lucky block, and I decided to build this small wall around the lucky block. I mean, if it was going to spawn things like this giant zombie, just imagine what it's going to spawn later. I had to be ready for anything. Once I had this small defense built, something terrible happened. The lucky block had summoned some spiders to my island, but this now meant that I could test out this lucky sword. I wanted to see what this thing could do, and it did not disappoint. Every time I was hitting one of these spiders, a new ability was happening in front of my eyes after every hit. The lucky block sword had shot out a piece of TNT. I had to be careful. I had just enough time to get out the way, so once again, I went back to mining. And that's when I discovered the wishing well. The lucky block had spawned in a wishing well and even a golden coin. The lucky block told me to throw in the coin, but when I did, nothing happened. I got tricked by the lucky block once again. I was now so close to getting to the next tier, I continued breaking the block. And after getting a pet lucky fox and some more random stuff, I was now on tier six the pink phase. This lucky block appeared to be the most interesting looking block yet. I couldn't wait to see what loot awaited me in this phase. Before I began mining away at this phase, I transferred goodies from my temporary chests to my main storage area. But while doing so, a group of mobs began attacking my giant zombie. I could not let this happen, so it was time for battle. There was countless enemies, but with some quick thinking and calculated sword attacks, I was able to take out these evil foes and keep my giant zombie friends safe. 
life. The next morning, I discovered that my new pet fox had eaten all of my chickens. I didn't want this to happen again, so I kept my lucky fox away from the farm and threw down some eggs to get some new chickens. I even made a pumpkin and beetroot farm so I could breed the chickens later. I then slept for the night and when I woke up, I wanted to do one more crucial task before beginning the pink lucky block phase. And this was to construct a mob farm so I could get tons of loot like arrows for my lucky bow, but also infinite XP for things like enchanting. This mob farm will take up a ton of resources, so I made a new and upgraded cobblestone generator so I could obtain tons of cobblestone blocks, and even made a new axe with efficiency 3 so that I could get building materials faster. I then spent the next few days collecting wooden stone for this mob farm, and once I had all of the materials, it was time to begin construction on the mob farm. <laughs> The mob farm took me quite some time, but when it was finished, it was looking pretty good if I do say so myself. All I had to do now was test it. I couldn't believe my eyes. The amount of XP I was getting was amazing. I was even able to mend my pickaxe to full durability and obtain a ton of mob drops. With all of my XP that I now had, I got a bunch of enchanted books, iron and netherite to upgrade my tools and armor. I started by making iron leggings and then turned my helmet and chest plate to netherite. I also upgraded my pickaxe by adding fortune and even used most of my enchanted books to add to my armor pieces. I was now feeling unstoppable. So after using some leftover materials to construct a new center area around the one block, the time was here to start on the pink lucky block phase. This phase seemed like it was going to be the hardest challenge yet because it had spawned a charged creeper onto my island and began spreading fire. Most things I had built on this island are made from wood so if the fire was to spread, all of my hard work would disappear. I used water balloons to try and save my island, but not even this was working. So I had to stop it myself. Seeing the dangers that can come from the pink lucky blocks made me want to finish this phase as fast as I could. So that's exactly what I did. But while I was mining through the phases, a giant nether structure had spawned on my island. Although I was burning in the lava, I was able to use a water bucket to keep myself safe. I then had to make sure that this lava didn't continue to flow and set my island on fire. Once I had stopped my island from burning, I had to get rid of this giant chunk. So I had to spend the next day mining this thing. Once this was done, I made some more progression on getting through this pink lucky block phase and well, I got introduced to a brand new item. It seemed to be some type of lucky potion. So after adding some luck to these things, I decided to test them out. They dropped a ton of good enchanted books and even some iron, emerald, gold and diamond blocks. These would definitely come in useful later. I then went back to mining the block and got super scared because a bunch of witches had spawned on my island. Although having these witches on my island was extremely dangerous, I was kind of happy it happened because I could now test out the lucky bow and just take a look at this thing's abilities. After every shot of the bow, a new ability unlocked. I literally shot a meteor from my bow and arrow. This is definitely the most powerful item I had obtained up to this point. After clearing out the debris of this giant meteor, the lucky block had summoned something that I hadn't ever seen before, an illusioner. Now the reason that the illusioner is extremely dangerous is because not only does it give you the blindness effect, it also spawns copies of itself. So so you don't know exactly what one you're supposed to hit. I tried swinging my sword, but was having no luck. It was time to become more calculated in my sword attacks. This thing was extremely confusing, but after some lucky sword attacks, I was able to take it out. I then got another visitor on my island, and it was some sort of wandering trader. And the trade seemed pretty interesting, because it was not only trading shulker boxes, but also the head of the lucky dragon. I definitely wanted to buy some things off this villager later, so I kept him safe for now and would build him his own home later. With the villager nice and safe, I made a quick potato farm so that I could get some food, and it also seemed that the lucky block wanted to reward me with something. It gave me a bunch of extra pink lucky blocks, and when I broke one of them, I got an epic lucky axe with efficiency 10. Now, this is definitely the best axe I could ever ask for. So, after repairing it in an anvil, I decided to test it out and couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. It was chopping down trees at an extreme speed. One of the pink lucky blocks then gave me a wishing well, but the thing is, this one actually worked. And when I threw the coin in, I was given a bunch of gold. And not not only this, I also got a beacon as well. I decided to set the beacon up and added haste to it. I would be able to use haste to mine through the lucky blocks faster. I then realized that I wanted to get rid of all these extra pink lucky blocks, simply because I wanted to get through this phase. But when I tried to do so, a blaze spawned and I really didn't think much of it, until one of its fireballs set my entire island up in flames. Luckily for me, I had so much water that I was able to patch everything back up and continue mining the lucky block. I then got another shopkeeper with a bunch of awesome trades, so I kept this one 
everyone safe as well. The end of this phase was getting close, and just as I was about to get into the next phase, an army of killer bunnies spawned on my island. The lucky block was seriously not giving me any breaks. Eventually, I was finally able to get into the next phase, and this was tier 7, the fire tier. The fire lucky block was glowing, and well, I could only guess that this lucky block would be giving me a ton of nether items. But before exploring this phase, I really wanted to give my villagers their own home, and not only this, I wanted to replace my whole center island with stone bricks, so that way if anything was to light up in flames, it wouldn't spread around. So after chopping down a bunch of trees with my overpowered axe, and mining a bunch of cobblestone from my cobblestone generator, it was time for construction. I began by replacing all of the blocks on my center island with stone bricks, and once this was done, it was time to build a house for my villagers. But not only would I be keeping my villagers in here, I would also be using it as a form of storage, and also a place to keep my nether portal. I then spent the next day moving my villagers over into their brand new home. And well, it's also not forget to block off the nether portal. I don't want these villagers escaping. Once the house was done, I decided to get some obsidian that I had obtained from a previous phase, and build a small safety room around the lucky block. This way, if anything dangerous spawns on the lucky block, it won't be able to escape. It was now time to see what I was going to get in these fire lucky blocks. And as I was mining, everything seemed pretty normal. That was until I got myself a fire lucky sword. This thing looked absolutely incredible, and I also realized that I could add luck to this thing. So, without hesitation, I went straight over to my crafting table and upgraded this thing's luck by a ton. I was really excited to see the crazy abilities that this thing will be able to do. Once my sword was upgraded, I went back to mining the lucky block, and I was given a new enemy that I hadn't seen before. This is Bob the Zombie. Bob the Zombie had a bunch of overpowered loot, so I decided to take him out. And when he dropped his leggings, I went over to the smithing table and upgraded them to netherite. I was now wearing full netherite armor. Feeling extra powerful, I continued mining the lucky block. The fire lucky block was spawning a bunch of things from the nether. I mean, it even spawned in a small chunk of the nether, which now meant my obsidian room was completely gone. The next day, I decided to mend up my pickaxe so I could continue mining the lucky block, and whilst mining, I got a bunch more fire goodies, including a fire lucky bow and a bunch of hot pockets. I decided to test throw one of these hot pockets, and it literally threw a bucket of lava. I was way too scared to test this thing on my own island. So instead of testing out the hot pockets, I tested out my fire lucky bow, and the bow was seriously overpowered. It had even more abilities than my lucky bow, so I would definitely be using this as my main bow from now on. I then went back to the one lucky block, and a wither skeleton called Peter had spawned on my island. It seemed extremely powerful, but luckily for me, I was able to take it out with ease. It dropped some more netherite armor. I kept this armor in my inventory for now, because a section of a nether fortress had spawned on my island. This thing was simply taking up too much space on my island, so I had to get rid of it. And just as I got rid of one structure, another one had unfortunately spawned. But this time, I had no idea where I was. Upon mining out of this weird-looking stone structure, I was able to see just what this thing was. It seemed to be some type of cave, including sand, gravel, and also some ores. Once I had removed this structure, it was time to get out of the fire phase and move on to the next phase. But whilst I was trying to do so, the lucky block had trapped me. I was trapped in an obsidian box filled with lava. I was in trouble, but luckily for me, I had a fire resistance potion, so I was able to drink this. I had escaped the box, but even more importantly, it was time to move on to the next phase. And after breaking the final fire lucky block, which did a bunch of explosive damage, I was now on the fish phase. I can only guess that I'll be getting things from the ocean in this phase. I couldn't wait any longer before diving into this lucky block, so that's exactly what I did. I decided to spend the entire day seeing what was inside of the fish lucky block. And while this phase surprised me with an unlucky fish villager, and when I was looking at what trades this villager was giving, it was quite possibly the worst trades that I had ever seen. I mean, the villager was asking for 64 diamonds for one single dirt block in return. I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. Anyway, after taking out an entire drowned army, the lucky block had covered my entire island in water. Although this was pretty cool, it meant that I couldn't mine the one lucky block anymore because, well, I would constantly be underwater. So I would have to find a fast way to get rid of all of this water. After some thinking, I came up with a genius idea. I realized that if I was to go into the depths of the nether and collect a bunch of netherrack blocks, I would be able to use these blocks to cover up all of the water and mine them away. This would then get rid of the water and return it all to air. To my surprise, this actually worked and it didn't even take that long. I then realized on day 84 that water isn't the only thing the lucky block can spawn because, well, something that I didn't expect to happen, happened. The lucky block had summoned tons of lava onto my island. I had no idea where I was and all I could see was lava. It got to the point where I even had to use one of my enchanted golden apples. Luckily for me, I was able to eat the enchanted golden apple just in time, but the rest of my island was not looking safe. The lava was causing everything to catch fire and, well, although I tried placing 
using water buckets to stop the lava, there was simply too much. I was watching everything that I had worked so hard for disappear in front of my eyes. I accepted the fact that there was no saving my island. I just had to watch everything happen. My tree farm and everything else that was made out of wood was beginning to fade away. Although I would still be able to keep everything that was in my chests, it was still sad to see all of my structures go. As much as I wanted to try and rebuild everything, it was day 84 and I simply didn't have enough time. Not only did I have some more phases of Lucky Block to get through, I also had to make sure that I had time to defeat the Lucky Block Dragon. So seeing as I didn't have much time, I repaired my tools and began mining down back to the Lucky Block. I had to mine a bunch of obsidian, so although this did take some time, I was able to get there in the end. And when I got down there, I saw the one Lucky Block. I wanted to get past this phase as fast as I could, so I began mining the Lucky Block, took out some skeletons, and there it was. I was now on tier 9, and this was the strange tier. This phase of the one lucky block looked extremely mysterious. I had no idea what to expect, but there was no time to waste. I had to begin breaking this lucky block. This lucky block was dropping tons of strange items and even began spawning in some structures. I mean, I can definitely see why this was called the strange tier because I got a strange comfy chest plate that appeared to be leather but was way better than my netherite gear. I then spent the next few days mining up the one lucky block to see what I could get. And even more importantly, getting to the final tier so I could take out the lucky block dragon. After quite a few days I was getting really close to the final tier and well after mining some more strange lucky blocks the time was here. I was now in the 10th and final tier and to my surprise this phase didn't even have a name. This phase consisted of all of the previous tier lucky blocks but it was all in one single phase. After mining some of these lucky blocks for a while I checked my inventory and realized that during the strange lucky block phase I was able to get my hands on 10 end portal frames and if I was able to combine this with the four previous end portal frames that I had, I now had enough to go and visit the Lucky Block Dragon. All I had to do now was make my way over to my storage room. Now, getting over to the storage room itself was actually pretty difficult. But once I was there, I opened up one of the chests and saw that I had 15 Eye of Enders. I had done a pretty good job of collecting all of these, so I went on top of my storage room and made a platform for the end portal frames. I placed them down one by one, and the time was here. It was time to battle the Lucky Block Dragon. Okay, I think I'm ready to fight the Lucky Block Dragon. So let's just put all of the Eyes of Ender inside of the portal frames. Do one last check that we have everything in our inventory. Let's put our water gun there in case we need to clutch. Put our golden apples there. And I'm also going to be using my fire lucky bow and also my fire lucky sword. So hopefully the battle against the Lucky Block Dragon should go smoothly. But it is coming up to day 100, so we should probably hurry up. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Now the question is, where is the Lucky Block Dragon going to be hiding? Hold up, I think we have found it and that looks absolutely terrifying. It's literally just a giant lucky block. Okay, first things first, let's take out all of the crystals. And with our powers that our bow has, this should be pretty easy. The lucky fire bow literally shoots meteors. Let's climb up the meteor and begin taking out the end crystals. The lucky block dragon literally shoots lucky block fireballs. I did not even realize that. This crystal should be the final one and... Let's try that again, and there we go. Let's just keep bowing the Lucky Block Dragon, and hopefully we should be able to take it out. Come on, let's just keep shooting the dragon. Okay, the dragon's coming towards us. Let's stay back. Okay, let's keep going, and you know what? Just in case I fall off, I'm just gonna shoot a ton of water buckets down here. Okay, I think this should be good. Now is not the time to be missing bow shots. I need to make sure I hit every single one of these. Okay, we're doing some serious damage. I'm also so lucky that this bow has infinity. Literally only a few more shots. The dragon is trying to perch right now. Oh, its health is so low, and this should be it. We are almost there. Come on. Yes, there we go. There we go. We have done it. We have taken out the lucky block dragon. Anyway, I have now survived 100 days on one lucky block. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.